Hello and welcome Kansas City. My name is Tanil Benton and you're here with What's Up Kansas City. I'm here with a very special guest today, Dr. Larry King. And today we're going to be talking about black wealth in white America. Dr. King, can you tell us a little bit about what is black wealth in white America? Well, basically, overall, it's black achievement. And when you look at our culture, when you look at the races, uh, there is uh, a, a major difference in accomplishment. And just to give you a little background about how I got started, I, uh, I am a retired middle school principal, and I worked in the uh, education system for 39 years. 20 years in the Kansas City, Missouri School District and 19 years in the Shawnee Mission School District. And what got me so involved in this study was uh, when I left the Kansas City School District and I went to the Shawnee Mission Schools, the first thing that I wanted to do was to check out test scores. And what did you find in checking out the test scores? Well, uh, the school that I was assigned to, they were in the top 3% of all the schools in the country, public and private. And when I dug a little deeper, I wanted to see how the races did. And, did we measure up? Well, no. Uh, uh, to my amazement, uh, I searched year after year, test after test. and our black kids scored statistically significantly lower wow. than the white kids. Now you and I both know that our black kids are brilliant people. We know that. I believe that we're one of the we're the smartest race on the planet. So it really it amazes me, you know, that we're the only people for real that don't recognize our potential. Other people recognize it. That's why they try to suppress it. That's mm -hmm. what I think. What do you think? Well I think that we understand that we are brilliant in certain areas. Now, when it comes to academics, uh, there's a different value system. But why is that? Is it because we view, or some of us view uh, education as that's the white man's thing? Well, very simplistically, yes. Because if you recall, there was a time when black folks could have been hung for learning how to read. Exactly. <clears throat> so when you talk about education, our black folks look at it as white man's prerogative. And so when they start achieving academically, and the subconsciously, this is not a conscious thing, but subconsciously, they see them looking more and more like their oppressors. So is this, they're considered Uncle Tom's now because you've decided you're going to go out and get an education? If you, if you stop to think about it, any time black folks climb the ladder of success, of success and we're the only race that, that, that has this, this challenge, but any time black folks climb the ladder of success, they are called names like Uncle Tom's, Wannabe, Oreo cookie, or you one of them, we are the only race that gets called uh, uh, a racial slur. Something derogatory for trying to be educated. Yes. Now, white folks, they get called uh, names too. They get called names like geeks or nerds or something like that. But we are the only ones that get called a racial slur, see. And, and do you think that is because of cultural inversion? Yes. Uh, Can you tell our audience what is cultural inversion for those who may not know? Cultural inversion is when a, a race or group of people turn on themselves. Sort of like the crab in the bucket syndrome. Exactly. Now you stop to think about it. Uh, when black folks climb the ladder of success, who is it that's calling them Uncle Tom's? Who is it? Other black people, right? <laughs> Isn't it sad? It's other black folks. Now, when I moved out to the Shawnee Mission School District 
and and I was the first and only black middle school principal in the history of that district. Wow, what an accomplishment! Well, it it was a blessing, and uh, I I loved my my experience there. But I did have people that would say, "Hmm, so you're out in Shawnee Mission." Well, I still lived in the you know Greater Kansas City area, but because I worked at Shawnee Mission, people tend to to look at me differently. In a negative way, right? Yes. And when I watched my children, now the first school that I worked, we had a population of about a thousand kids. It was actually 998, I remember that. And out of the 998, only four were black. <laughs> oh! Now, as the years went by, now this was in 1993, as the years went by, the, uh, the demographic started to change and we got more and more uh, black kids in the district. And I made it a point to watch them and to see how they were uh, uh, integrating into that culture. Because when you look at black achievement in white America, and I mean, give me a break. We, it's, it's not a secret. It's not a secret that our culture is owned and operated, run by white males. Not a secret. And the laws and the rules and the guidelines is made predominantly by white folks. Now, in order for us to be successful, you believe that in order to really, ooh, there's something else I want to touch on, but in order to really create black wealth in white America, we need to work the system. Basically, what does that mean? Meaning getting an education. Um, but And I am all for education, but this is my thing. Mm -hmm. I am not for you going to go get an education to go work for the white man. Mm -hmm. I'm for you to get an education to go be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. work for yourself, do something for your community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Exactly. I uh, Several years ago, I was listening to, uh, I was flipping channels, and you know who Ice-T is. Uh, he was giving a speech. It was powerful. And he says, black folks, you need to go to school. You need to get an education. You need to infiltrate the system and then take over the system. And I said, wow, that's powerful. But, and I wanted to give the same message to my kids, but I had to tone it down, okay? Yes, go to school. Yes, get an education. But by that, I mean A's and B's. Not right. these. We couldn't bring C's or anything less home yeah. in, in our house. Uh, Special thanks to my parents, uh, Sherry and David Scannell, for really making me be scholarly. My parents are college educated, and I think it makes a difference because I believe you can't tell somebody to get an education when you can't have one. When you do it, it mm -hmm. sounds good, mm -hmm. but they want to know, well, what did you do? Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, role model is important. And... Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, complete Ice T's list. Um, instead of infiltrate the system, I would tell the kids learn how the system works. The rules. That's good. Find out what the, just find out what the rules are, and then just abide by the rules. Yeah, you know, technically there's enough laws to protect us, and, and let's 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 be real here. Racism is alive and well. I mean, it still exists, and we can handle that. I mean, as long as I know what the rules are, I can function within this culture using your rules. And what is this culture? Is the, this the white American culture? Our culture is designed primarily by white males. And it is des designed for to make white people successful, correct? Well, it's not so much that the culture is designed just to make white folks successful. Okay. It's designed by them and they design a system that fits them because it's them. When I was uh, working in the, in, the, in the system and I had teachers who said that they're great teachers 
And I will say to them, yes, you are a good teacher, but let's see how, let's see how good you will be at Central Middle, KCK or KC Moore. It wouldn't be able Let's to see how good you will be. See, a good teacher is a good teacher is a good teacher. See, Wherever you are. And anyone can be a good teacher if they're teaching people who are just like them. See? So then do you think that black kids should only be taught by black teachers? Not necessarily. I think there are some incredible white teachers who have skills who can communicate with our black kids, but it has to be a learned activity. They have to understand that black folks have this uh, uh, idea about white folks. I have a question, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this and put it out there. And it may not be a question. It may be more of an opinion. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, uh, we as a race, as a people, are the most smartest people ever. And it shows because we were in the fields. We have been able to do tremendous things without learning how to read. Mm -hmm. They were sewing, cooking, dancing, teaching, doing other things, and didn't even know how to read. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was a teacher's aide and did better than the teacher in the Kansas City School District. My grandmother didn't ever formally know how to read. Mm -hmm. She was taken out of school at a young age to raise her siblings. Mm -hmm. My grandmother went back to school and really formally got an education. She was in her 60s. Yes. And so in my, I used to feel that the only reason that we're not working for the Chinese right now or the Koreans is because we're so busy trying to run and get a degree that you're not going to have a job for when you graduate or you're too busy taking prescription drugs. Well, I, I, I don't uh, knock education. I think education is a, a wonderful thing. And I encourage folks, yes, get your degrees, get your education. And one of the main reasons is because in this culture... Your voice it, only matters if you have that piece of paper. In this culture, that's the way it is. You've got to have an education. Uh, uh, you've got to have a diploma or a certificate. You have to have something from an accredited uh, institution. That's just the way it is. That's the culture. So instead of being upset about that or trying to knock that, that is a part of the culture. Like I said, know what the rules are and play by the rules. Now, tell us where we can find you. We're going to do another segment to this, so I want you all to be looking forward to this. But we're going to wrap this one up. Tell us where people can find you and learn more about black wealth in white America and what you do. Let me just give you, uh, tell you to uh, email me. And my email address is Dr. Larry King. That is Dr. Larry King at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. I'd like to thank our viewers. I'd like to thank Dr. Larry King for being with us. Also want to thank WhatsUpKansasCity.net. Be sure you go and check out all of our interviews at WhatsUpKansasCity.net and Cascade Sports. And remember, if you can't keep it real with yourself, you can't keep it real with Tennille. Oh, you want to do another 15? Ha <laughs> ha, that was hot. What's up, Kansas City? We are Cascade Media Group. CMG is calling all small businesses, organizations, solicitors of products or services that would like to reach their KC Metro viewers and would like our help. We produce commercials, promote, advertise, and film events. Not to mention display company banners, including a link to your website on either of our sites. That's whatsopkansascity.net, the premier outlet for Kansas City, or CascadeSports.tv, home of the student athletes. If you're interested, contact CMG at 816-389-0259 or email us at mgcascademediagroup at hotmail.com. And remember, it, it pays, pays to advertise. advertise.